In this video, we're going to learn about exceptions in C++. Exceptions are a feature built into C++ for handling unexpected or unwanted events that occur during our program's execution. So code in our program can throw an exception to indicate that something has gone wrong. This will normally cause our program to crash with an error message unless we catch the exception using what's called a try-catch block, allowing us to handle the exception in some way without the program crashing. Exceptions can be thrown by some of the built-in C++ operators and standard library functions. So for example, we can declare a string variable called word and we'll set it to the word for. We can then access the individual characters of this string using the at method. So we could have here cout and then word dot at three followed by an inline. So at three is going to give us the fourth character in the string which is going to be lowercase r. We can save, compile, and run the program, and we get lowercase r. What if though we had dot at four? There is no fifth character in the string. If we save, compile, and run the program, now we'll get this, terminating with uncaught exception of type std colon colon out of range basic string. So our program has crashed with an error this is an uncaught exception. So what's happened is the at method has thrown an exception, but we never caught the exception. Let's actually try to catch the exception now using a try catch block. We're going to wrap this code in a try catch block. So we put the code that may throw an exception inside the try block portion of the try catch block. The try block is created with try and then open curly brace, and then close curly brace. And the try block is going to allow us to essentially listen for an exception, to potentially catch an exception when one occurs. To catch the exception, we also need to use a catch block. So here, we'll have catch, and we'll have dot, 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 and then another block. And this is a catch block. Now, if an exception is thrown in this try block, execution is going to jump to this catch block where we can have code to handle that exception. So for example, we could output here, exception thrown followed by an inline. If we save, compile and run the program, this time we no longer have the program crash. Instead, we output exception thrown. So what happened is when this code here through the exception, we caught it and we output exception thrown followed by an inline. So exceptions give us a mechanism for recognizing when unexpected program behavior has occurred and for handling it. Now exceptions are thrown with a type. This catch block here is a special catch block that's going to catch any type of exception. The exception thrown here is going to be an out of range exception. We could have here out of range and then and E. And this catch block will catch this specific type of exception. Now when the exception is thrown, an out of range type object is going to be provided. E is going to be a reference to that object. E is a bit like a function parameter that's going to be set to the object thrown in the try block. Now E is an object that has a method called what. And the what method is going to return a string which may contain information about the exception that has taken place. So here we could have exception colon, and then we'll have e dot what to output that string. And if we save compile and run the program, now we get exception colon basic underscore string. So that's what the what method must have returned. Now this catch block is only going to catch exceptions of the type out of range, but there are other types of exceptions. So for example, let's try to dynamically allocate space for an array of ints that's way too large. We'll have here int star array is equal to new int, and we'll have an array with a length that's way too large. We'll save compile and run the program. And now we get this different exception here. It says terminating with uncut exception of type bad underscore alloc. So this is a different type of exception. And because of that, this catch block here 
is not going to catch it. So we could actually have a second catch block to catch this type of exception. We could have here catch and then bad underscore alloc and E. And here we'll output second catch colon followed by E dot what followed by an inline. And we'll change this one here to first catch just so we can tell the difference. Now this bad alloc exception should be caught by the second catch block. We'll try this out. We'll save compile and run the program. And now we get second catch and std colon colon bad underscore alloc. So now the second catch block is catching the exception of that type. Now in C++, there's a hierarchy of exception types. So at the top, there is a base exception class and bad alloc is a derived class of exception. Out of range is a derived class of logic error, which is a derived class of exception. Now, of course, the entire hierarchy is more complicated than this. I'll post a link in the video description covering that hierarchy. But because bad alloc is a derived class of exception, it is also an exception. So here, if we had exception instead of bad alloc, this will also catch a bad alloc exception. We could save compile and run the program. And again, we'll get second catch and std colon colon bad alloc. So we need to be mindful of this when creating our catch blocks because our catch blocks are going to be checked in order. So for example, if here we had bad alloc and then up here, instead of out of range, we had exception. Even though we're trying to specifically catch a bad alloc exception, we'll never reach this code because the first catch is going to match that bad alloc exception. We could save, compile, and run the program, and we'll get here first catch. So we need to be mindful of this when creating our catch blocks. So for example, we could first try to catch and handle specific types of exceptions. Then afterwards, we could try to catch and handle the general exception type. We could have here catch and then exception and E, and we could have here C out exception caught colon followed by E dot what followed by an end line. And so this catch block is going to match for any type of exception object being thrown. We can actually throw our own exceptions. So up here, let's actually comment this out and we'll throw our own exception. We'll have here throw and then exception. And if we save compile and run the program, we'll get here exception caught. And here we're using the exception type. So it's that last catch block that matches. We could throw a specific type of exception. So for example, we could have here throw and we'll have runtime error and we'll actually give a message here now too. We'll have problem encountered. And then we'll save, compile, and run the program. And now we get exception caught, problem encountered. We can actually create our own custom exception types. We can then throw and catch exceptions of those types. For example, we can create a drive class of exception. So up here, we'll do that. We'll have here class, and then custom exception, and we'll make it a derived class of exception. And we'll provide our own definition of the what method. We'll have virtual const car pointer, what, and then const no accept. And we'll have the function return the string custom exception. Then down here, we'll throw this custom exception. We'll have throw and then custom exception. So we'll delete this and we'll have throw custom exception. And if we save compile and run the program, we see that our custom exception was thrown and caught. One day I'll make a whole video going over creating our own custom exception types. But one thing I should mention is this no accept specifier this specifier means that this function will not throw an exception.
And that makes sense because this function is helping to define an exception type. We wouldn't want the function to also throw an exception. Now we don't actually have to throw an exception type object. We can throw any type of value and catch it too. So for example, we could have here throw and we'll throw, let's say 20. If we save compile and run the program right now, we're not going to actually catch this exception. We get terminating with uncut exception of type int. And that's because none of our catch blocks are looking for an int type exception. We could actually catch an int type exception. So down here, we'll add a new catch block. We'll have catch and then int code. And the int that we throw as an exception is going to be what code is set to. We could output here error code colon, and we'll put the code followed by an end line. And now if we save compile and run the program, we'll get error code 20 and we have now caught that exception. So if we want to have a true last chance default catch case that will catch anything thrown, we should have here catch and then dot, dot, dot. And then we'll have in here see out default catch case followed by an inline. Now up here, if we try to throw something that is not an int or an exception type object, we can still catch it. So if we throw a double type value like 5.6, we can now catch this exception. We can save compile and run the program and we'll get here default catch case. Now we can actually throw the exception inside a function that we call. So for example, we could have here void my function one and this function is going to throw the exception. We'll have throw 5.6. Then down here, if we call the function with my function one, we'll catch the exception that this function throws. So we can save compile and run the program. And again, we'll catch the exception. It doesn't really matter how deep the exception occurs in a series of function calls. When an exception is thrown, we can sort of think of the exception as floating up through the series of function calls until the closest catch block is able to catch it. So for example, if my function one called my function two and my function two throws the exception, so we could have void my function two and throw 5.6, even though the exception is happening inside a function call inside another function call, the exception is going to propagate upwards until it hits our catch block. So we could save compile and run the program and we'll still catch the exception with default catch case. So there's a few more things that I want to mention about exceptions. In general, as a good practice, we want to catch and handle specific types of exceptions or at least exception types that are more specific than less specific. The idea is that we should know what types of problems could occur and how to handle those problems. And if we're relying on catch all cases to handle problems, then maybe we don't know what's really going on. Now I'm not saying never to use catch all catch blocks, but you should be careful that you're not using them as a way to mask unknown errors that are occurring. Now that we know the mechanics of exceptions, I should mention that a big reason why we use exceptions is that they allow us to separate code that handles errors from the algorithms in which those errors could occur. We don't need to clutter up our functions trying to do real work with error handling work. We can let them focus on solving a problem and we can let our exception handling code deal with the errors. Separating concerns like this is generally a good thing in software development. It is possible to misuse exceptions. The way that exceptions jump control flow immediately to a catch block might make attempting to use them to actually implement control flow as part of some algorithm that we're creating. But this would make code that's difficult to trace and follow in a similar way that using goto statements makes code difficult to trace and follow. So this is how we can use exceptions in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.